Welcome back. Um, now uh, I'd like for us to go over uh, the, the assignment that we have on hand, which is civil disobedience, um, and it is by Mahatma Gandhi. How many of us have already completed uh, the assignment uh, or, or reviewed the video, rather, uh, on Gandhi and know a little bit about the SALT march? Has anybody looked at that just yet? No. No? Okay. Well, you want to make sure that you do that because it'll offer you some background information on the author um, and it'll give you a little bit of context for what on, diso on civil disobedience was, was really about. Okay. So um, I want to just encourage you to do that so that you can have, of course, that background uh, on the information. Um, and so you feel more confident in your answers. How many of us did uh, maybe a Google search or something like that to learn, uh, to learn a little bit more about Gandhi? Yes, I have. You did? Okay, so when you did your Google search, what are some of the things that you learned about him and maybe potentially about the occasion for on civil disobedience? They practice nonviolence with non-resistance and he, that's how he was able to get his people free. And he was a lawyer. Okay, yes, he's a lawyer. And, uh, and he did practice nonviolence. Um, and, uh, and he called that what? What did he call that? I forgot that word. <laughs> Does anyone else remember maybe the word uh, that, that's been attached to Gandhi for his nonviolent uh, resistance? It's an easy question, so I'm not trying to trip you up here. <laughs> Does anyone know? Okay, well, if you're not sure about that term, then completing this assignment is going to be a little difficult because the assignment itself is on the term, and that is civil disobedience. Okay, um, so I just want to encourage you guys to go ahead and do, um, and do all of the background information before approaching the text, just so you kind of have a context. Um, so with that said, I want to go ahead and look at the questions that you have. Um, to give you some idea regarding how to answer those questions um, and then release you into the world to go do, uh, to do your good work, all right? So uh, do you mind if I share my screen with you just to make sure that we're all on the same page? Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, give me two seconds. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> okay, where's there it is. Okay. All right, here we go. Can you guys see my screen now? Uh, no. No. Not yet. To you. You still see me, but not the screen. Let's try. Yeah, that. neat looking candle behind you. Thank you. It's a, it's a great candle, actually. <laughs> it's yeah, there we go. Candle. All right, can you see the screen now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right, so uh, we're going to scroll down to module number five. And that's where we're going to find our question for today. And there it is. All right. Um, and then we are going to take a look at uh, the questions for civil disobedience. No, nope. no, no, no. There, there, there. <laughs> Hold on. Like my finger is telling it one thing and my brain's telling it one thing, but I'm just doing what it wants to do. There we are. Here we go. All right, so let's look at the instructions first and then we'll look at the information second. So uh, for this assignment, uh, you're going to have two short answer questions, which will require a 100 to 300 word response, uh, and you'll be using the apparatus of claim, evidence, and warrant. Uh, we used that in our previous exercise, uh, and so we'll be using that again here. The third question, however, is a short essay, uh, and it's going to consist of at least three paragraphs. So that's going to merge what we learned in our previous assignment, major assignment, the research proposal, um, and it's going to merge what we learned in our most recent major assignment, which was uh, the assignment on uh, President Reagan and President Obama, a short answer response. 
So it merges the, those two ideas together. So uh, let's look at the quiz. Okay. So the first question is, what is Gandhi's definition of civil disobedience? So we opened our time today talking about civil disobedience, right? So your goal here is going to be to take the definition of civil disobedience and then read on civil disobedience and try to see where Gandhi heard you that in evidence, all right? So you want to make sure that you're able to do that. Does anyone have any questions on how to answer question number one? Uh, could you actually just repeat what you just said? It was a little staticky. Sure, no problem. I'm happy to. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the definition of civil disobedience, right? We talked about that at the beginning of the class today. And you're going to then try to look for evidence of that in Gandhi's um, speech on civil disobedience. So you'll need to try to find some evidence of it in order to support whatever it is that you say uh, you believe Gandhi's definition of civil disobedience is. Does that make sense? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Remember, we have a general definition, and then maybe how Gandhi would define it. So you want to make sure that you're that you're making uh, connections there and and providing sufficient evidence. Okay. Um, can we move on to question number two? Yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, thanks. Okay, question number two, discuss Gandhi's perspectives on war and prosperous nations. Okay, so this one is um, an interesting question because you have to uh, do a couple of things just to arrive at Gandhi's perspectives on war and prosperous nations. What's the first thing we would need to do to answer this question? How can we approach it? Uh, know the state of the world at the time. Right. You have to know the context for, for the speech. You got to know what occasion uh, prompted this particular work. Okay, so you're going to have to know that for sure. And then after you know the occasion and what prompted Gandhi to offer uh, this particular message, then you need to do what in order to figure out his perspectives on war and prosperous nations. His ideology. You want to get his ideology. Where would we get that from? Um, a biography, maybe? Maybe a biography for sure. Um, do you think that you can perhaps find it in the actual text? Do you think yes. you can find it in the text? Of course. Right? So you're going to want to look for keywords like war and keywords like prosperous nations, right? So you want to do a scan for that just so that you can find the information uh, and then maybe mark it as potential evidence uh, that you would be able to use in your answer. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Okay, so you wanna, you wanna connect this idea of, um, you wanna connect the idea of uh, the, the occasion for the speech and maybe who he's considering as prosperous and maybe who he's considering as a weaker nation. Um, and then you wanna make sure that you're understanding what's happening with the wars to be able to merge and fuse these ideas together and then to produce a strong claim accordingly. Right. Um, can I answer any questions about how to answer question number two? You mean besides no. what's the answer to question number two? Uh -huh, I can't give you the answer. Do I give you the answer? Then everybody will have the same one and it'll get boring to gray, blah, blah, blah. Plus we want your claims to be specific to what you believe, right? This is the time to assert your opinion and, and just let it fly. Um, there's gonna be an obvious answer, right? So everybody's gonna be able to look at it and say, well, Gandhi believes this about how prosperous nations should treat weaker nations in times of war. Everybody can pretty much see that, right? Um, but how you explain it, that's going to be the difference. Do you want a hint? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to give you a hint. Okay, I want, you, I want to give you this hint. Look in paragraph number one on page 150. Uh, in, um, in your in paragraph one, you're probably going to find the words uh, prosperous nations. Um, and then you'll have to connect what's going on with the war, and then you'll have to make it all awesome. Did you say it was on page 115? One, 150. 150. It's been my hardest part this whole semester is trying to find where all the text is. <laughs> Always look at right. the parenthesis um, at the end of the name of the text. And the parenthesis, is, it should be the page for there. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Where is we should it? probably put page, we should probably put parenthesis page number name of the textbook and also page number uh, but the shortcut is just parenthesis and then the actual page number next to the textbook. all right but noted next semester i just may do that um are there any other questions for uh, this particular question no that's no. what i'm aware of Good. all right uh we can keep going then all right, so let's look at the big kahuna here today. This is going to be question number three, it's the largest, uh, most weighted question. And so we want to make sure that we have a good strategy for answering it. So it says, in a short essay, explain how Gandhi's ideas work today, use specific examples. All right, so what's the first thing that we need to note about this writing prompt? Oh, about the state of today? Yes. You're going to have to know about the state of today and you're going to have to connect it to what idea? Civil disobedience. Yes, civil disobedience, but you want to look at the text to make sure that you're super, super clear on how Gandhi would think about civil disobedience, right? Because it's specifically saying Gandhi's ideas. So those ideas would be ideas that have been communicated uh, in some way in the text. Uh, if you decide to take his ideas generally, uh, you're you're going to have to still connect it to some sort of evidence in the text, right? Um, in, in order to do that, um, you may want to just back into it by just thinking about his ideas in the text, maybe in terms of what he's saying about prosperous nations and weaker nations in times of war, maybe in terms of the message he's giving about the economy, um, and maybe the message in terms of how he uh, looks at uh, prosperous nations, right? Because he gives some pretty uh, specific ideas about how he believes they they look. He gives an illustration of it even um, in that first paragraph. Uh, so you want to think about his ideas and what you can prove with evidence and then think about an example to go along with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I think so. You think it makes so? sense now. We'll make Mind sure. Later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let it make sense now. I mean, it, and here's how you make sense of things even without needing me. It says, in a short essay, explain how Gandhi's ideas work today, right? That's what you have to work with. So the key thing that you want to pay attention to and ask yourself a question about are what are his ideas? That's step one. And then step two is, well, how do his ideas work today? And then you want to make sure that you're true to what the assignment is asking for, right? So if you look up here, it says the short essay must consist of at least three paragraphs. The first paragraph will be written with an introduction, with an introductory statement, a discussion, and a thesis. Therefore, you know that this format that we just used in the previous class is going to suggest that you're going to deal with the topic of the assignment and the topic of the assignment is going to be Gandhi's ideas and you're going to have to link them to a current event right With so, specific examples and you're going to have to offer specific examples in the second part of the essay right so the first part is just to get the reader interested and to take them to the thesis and the thesis should be answering the question posed or the challenge posed in the writing prompt Okay, so that's just in terms of how to answer it and come up with a thesis based claim. Okay, you're coming up with a thesis based claim. It's the same process that we just used uh, in the short answer response. The second thing that you're going to want to do is to include one or more body, body paragraphs that offer direct quotes to connect the evidence from the text. Therefore, if you try to just use Gandhi's ideas in general, right, and it's not anything that's connected to the text, then when I'm grading the assignment or I'm looking at it, you won't have direct quotes from the text in order to support what you are wanting to prove in your thesis. Does that make sense at all? Hello? Does that make sense? Can you hear yes. me? What? Okay, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so. <laughs> so you want to make sure that just in looking at the instructions that you are connecting the instructions to what you're expected to do. So now we see that Gandhi's ideas are going to have to be text supported in order for us to produce the right evidence. Right. Um, 
And then you're also going to have to offer parenthetical citations. All right. So now that we've talked about the body paragraph, I want to go ahead and talk about strategies for creating it uh, and the introduction paragraph. And then I'll end with talking about the conclusion paragraph. Uh, is that okay? Um, so for the body paragraphs, is that going to be kind of similar to the short answer response kind of uh, the diagram for it? Yes, it's going to have the same structure. You're going to need to give a claim, uh, which will end up being your topic sentence. Uh, you're going to need to produce evidence, which could come from the text uh, on civil disobedience. And you will need to produce an explanation or a warrant for how that connects to a current event. Okay, that makes sense. See that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. So that's going to be the best way to approach it to make sure that you check all of the boxes for what needs to be there. Um, any questions about how the body paragraph should be set up? Should I go over that again or did you grab it? Yes? So. One more time? Or no, I think yeah. One more time? Okay, I'll do yeah, it. Why not? No. Okay. <laughs> just to make sure we're clear. Okay, so uh, when you're doing the body paragraph, you're going to need to make sure that you use the same structure that you learned for claim evidence and warrant, right? So your claim uh, is going to be uh, your answer to the research, hmm, your answer to the writing prompt. How do Gandhi's ideas work today? That's your answer. That's going to be uh, in your thesis right? When you get to the body paragraph, you're going to need to provide evidence, right? So you can create a new topic sentence to go into greater detail about your thesis, and then you can provide evidence from the speech in order to support whatever you said in that topic sentence, and then connect it through a warrant or, or through an explanation to how, his, to how his ideas work today. So you're essentially using the same structure. It's just longer. It's just longer. And it's in just a different uh, context because you have an introduction, you have a body, and you have a conclusion. Uh, and so you're putting still all the pieces there. You just have three different structures to negotiate. Does that make sense? You have the introduction, the attention grabber, the bridge to take me to the thesis. And then you have the body paragraph to really do the mix of Gandhi's ideas to uh, how they work today for current event or, or, or within a current event. And then you have the conclusion. And I'll talk about the conclusion in a second once we're clear about the introduction in the body. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. So let's talk about um, what types of current events work well with Gandhi's philosophy or his ideas. Um, I don't want you to give me your answers because I don't want anyone else stealing them and not doing their own thought, 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 thought process in research. Uh, so I'm going to give you one that's been used before and that's been kind of overused. So I'm hoping I don't see it anymore. Uh, but it was a great connection. Uh, when I first started assigning this essay, I used to get quite a few papers about uh, the NFL uh, kneeling situation that was kind of spearheaded by Colin Kaepernick. And it was a form of civil disobedience where uh, the football players were using the platform of the NFL in order to protest um, violence uh, against African Americans uh, by the police. And they use that as a platform. And so they weren't necessarily doing anything that was violent or that, you know, caused uh, anyone any, any necessary physical uh, anguish, except that they made people pretty uncomfortable. Um, and people questioned if it was the right platform to even make such a statement, right? So the the example itself is, is one that is a part of civil disobedience. Whether it's right or wrong, that part you can argue or you would be able to talk about in your warrant or maybe even in your conclusion. Uh, so you wanna pick an example that 
is aligned with Gandhi's ideology on nonviolent resistance. Um, and so you want to pick something that's going on in the world where people are using uh, nonviolent protests to still try to get their point across. Right. Makes sense. Is that, does that resonate with you all? Um, yes. 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 Okay. okay. Wonderful. If you want to, when we jump off of this uh, webinar and you want to maybe ask me questions about your specific um, idea, I'm happy to try to process it all through with you to make sure that you completely uh, feel comfortable with uh, whatever current event you're using. One of the things you're going to want to keep in mind as you're putting this together is that you want to uh, use something that you can talk about, right? Something you feel comfortable with. So you don't want to be vague uh, as you're giving this answer. You want to be informed. So whatever you choose, uh, make sure that you read up on it and that you kind of understand it theoretically uh, before trying to blend it into uh, your body paragraphs um, and maybe even pushing it uh, further into your conclusion. All right? All right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's talk about the conclusion paragraph if no one has any questions about the body paragraphs. So you said we can't use that, that, that Colin Kaepernick one? No, don't use Colin Kaepernick. There are other things going on in the world. And plus, that's kind of old news. People don't do it anymore, uh, really. Um, and it is, um, and it's something that's, that's kind of uh, obvious and everybody would choose it. Choose something more interesting. Uh, I'll give you a hint. There was something um, that just happened for Women's History Month in Mexico, in the whole country. Uh, and they had uh, something that, that represented uh, a symbolic protest. Uh, I won't give you the details. You'll have to look it up. Uh, but that type of idea uh, maybe would work. Uh, so, so, so you want to pick something um, that you're interested in that you think uh, is an example of protest without violence. Hope it's without violence. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you can also talk about if there has been something that was maybe st that maybe started out peacefully um, and then became violent. We could talk about that too. I mean, it's still there and it's still provable based upon uh, Gandhi's uh, ideas and ideology. What about the college kids in China? Can we talk about that? You can, if you weave it in, then sure. I mean, there are no real wrong answers as long as you can uh, prove it through a strong warrant. It's like you have to okay. keep in mind your reader, in, in this case, is on your side and I want you to win. So I'm just going to see if you give me enough information uh, in order to support your winning. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, are there any other questions about what, what can be used as a current event? Okay, let's move to the conclusion. So based upon the guidelines of the assignment, um, it says that the conclusion of the short essay should demonstrate the reflect and project method. Okay, so for the conclusion, you're going to make sure that you um, reiterate whatever answer you gave about how Gandhi's ideas work today. Um, you want to make sure that you reiterate whatever it is that you said in the introduction paragraph. Uh, then you also want to make sure that you are reflecting on what he actually said in the context in which he said it and then the ideas and how they work today. You're gonna to revisit this. And then you'll offer uh, a conclusion sentence to make sure that you close out your paragraph uh, in a satisfying way, all right? All right. Does anyone have any questions over the type of content that should be in the conclusion paragraph? No. no? Awesome, awesome. Um, should I go over the introduction paragraph with you again? I went over it so much in the research proposal. I feel like you guys may be burned out on it, but I'm happy to go over that structure with you again. Uh, I can always use the information if you're willing okay. to. Okay, yeah, right. for sure, for sure. Okay, so let's do it. All right, so for the introduction paragraph, I'm actually gonna, um, I'm gonna leave here 
and I'm going to go into the introduction paragraph. And the reason I'm going to do that is because next week um, we are going to be focused solely on uh, the the analysis essay, and we're going to be talking about that introduction paragraph. So we'll get a little bit ahead of it um, with that in mind. So let me go over to let me go over to uh, the page on introductions. Um, As we think about introductions, um, you know, there's just certain ways that, that we always want to write them, okay? You always want to have a thesis statement. Uh, and we talked about for uh, the short answer assignment that you have in front of you that your thesis statement would include um, Gandhi's ideas and then also um, how those ideas work today. So I won't focus on narrowing the thesis for this uh, time together. Instead, I'll move on um, and I'll go over this information about vague versus strong thesis statements next week, all right? Um, the main thing is that you wanna make sure that you are addressing exactly what the writing prompt asks for. And in this case, it's going to be uh, Gandhi's ideas and it's also gonna be the current event. I do want to talk about uh, the paragraph structure, though. If you need to access this, there's a whole lesson on it. Um, but I want to talk about what should be in your introduction paragraph. If you look down here, you'll see that there is uh, maybe the way that we learned it in high school, which is the introductory statement, the attention grabber, the thesis, three topic sentences, the three things you're going to talk about, and then the conclusion statement. Uh, for a short answer essay, you could use the structure and it would be okay. Um, but for the short essay, you, I think it's probably beneficial to use the preferred method. And that is where you give an attention grabbing introductory statement. Does anyone remember the three that we've already learned so far this semester? If you just give me one of them, I'll be excited. We learned it in the research proposal paper. I'll give you one, the rhetorical question. Do you remember that? Okay. The other was the historical data. You remember that? Somebody in the chat said historical, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the last one was the anecdotal introductory statement where you gave a personal account. Yeah, I remember those. Remember that one? Okay. And so we're going to add to it the shocking statistic, which was suggested uh, if you did the, the, um, the rhetorical question to pair it together. So you have that one. Um, there are a variety of things. We have a question approach, which is uh, in this week's module. Um, so there are a variety of ways that you can get your reader interested in your paper. So for this one, um, you get to choose how you want to back into your information. If for some reason you're personally connected with um, the current event that you want to speak about, then maybe the anecdotal would be a good idea here. Um, if you want to offer history, maybe uh, on, on the connection that you're going to make in terms of current event, like maybe where this movement started, uh, maybe the historical introductory statement would be good there. Do you guys kind of catch where I'm going with this thought process? Yes. Okay. So you can move, you can use a rhetorical question. You can use a variety of things in order to get your reader interested in, in your um, Gandhi paper. Okay. The next part is the bridge. And the bridge is going to give the pros and cons of a concept. It's going to give agreements and disagreements, those people who agree and those people who disagree. It's going to give that. Uh, it may give various points of view, the way different people or different groups look at a single idea. So the bridge here uh, can, can again be something that's connected to uh, the topic of your essay. So it may be based upon your thesis and you drag your introductory statement through your bridge to lead to your thesis because the bridge is thesis connected or your bridge can be connected to your introductory statement where whatever it is that you were talking about uh, in the topic of your introductory statement, you write through your bridge and then you 
and then you kind of force it and connect it at the end into your thesis statement. The main thing is that you want to stay on subject uh, as you think about Gandhi's ideas in your current event. You want to make sure that you have that in mind the entire time you're crafting uh, your introductory statement, your bridge, and your thesis. Um, are there any questions about that? This is more of a creative exercise. It's almost like creative writing when you're writing introductory statements. So if you feel like you're just kind of out here flailing around and you don't know if it's any good, um, these are just markers to let you know kind of what you should be doing next, right? But really that writing has to come out of you. Uh, I love creative writing, but this is stressful. <laughs> Well, what's stressful, I think, most is that you actually have uh, markers, right, and things that you should meet in terms of the structure. Um, and those markers are there mainly to help you know that you're doing each thing well or that you're checking things off of the list like we do in math, right? Mm -hmm. Math is more exact. Writing is not. <laughs> So it's a mixture of these guidelines and then also your creativity, uh, interpreting it and thinking about how you can communicate it, the information you want to say. I'm just gonna do my best and try not to worry about it too much. Yes, let's, let's, let's focus on the last two things, doing your best and don't worry about it too much. If you have questions along the way, you guys, you can make appointments with me uh, and set more and now they have this new wonderful feature where we can video message uh, at our appointment time in set more so there's no going back and forth between canvas to zoom etc you can do all of your appointment making and meeting all in the same space i keep missing my appointments <laughs> we will keep getting you rescheduled don't worry <laughs> it's okay it's okay all right, are there any other questions for me? Anything else I can answer for you? Okay, I'm gonna stop the webinar then, and then I'll just open the floor for general questions. Does that mean we're like not recording anymore or something? As soon as I press stop, we're not recording anymore. <laughs> Here we go. Yay. All right, stop recording. Bye everybody who's listening to the recording. <laughs>